welcome back after lunch so the topic that i am engaged in for this course uh, is something that is usually not uh, uh, taught or learned as part of technical communication skills but in today's uh, globalized world these skills are considered to be very important both for uh, written and uh, oral communication both in technical communication as well as workplace communication and uh, those of you who attended who um, saw my video lectures would know that i also cover uh, a bit about uh, issues related to gender and diversity in teaching so this particular module that we also teach for uh, our students here in iit focuses on gender and diversity uh, but but this module is particularly focused on stem disciplines which is science technology engineering and mathematics since this course is specifically meant for uh, these disciplines in iit of course when we teach this we also include students from other backgrounds including management humanities and social sciences and so on so what we plan to do in this uh, uh, tutorial uh, till um, uh, 345 till 245 and then the next session till 415 is to review some of the things that were covered in my lectures and also uh, uh, to work out uh, some problems and solutions so we'll do some tutorials as well uh, also uh, since we had given some assignments i plan to engage in discussion with some of you um, who would have attempted these assignments so that we can mutually learn from each other so um, in the lecture i have explained that stem refers to science technology engineering and mathematics and one of the objectives of this particular module is not only to develop an understanding of science technology engineering and mathematics but how diversity issues matter in science technology engineering and mathematics we know that these four uh, broad disciplines uh, the people who work in these areas both in teaching and research mostly come from a very narrow stream of socio cultural backgrounds and in countries like india which are still developing countries it's very essential that we bring in people from as many different diverse backgrounds as possible into these fields because these are seen to be very important to contribute to issues of development that we have discussed uh, in the lectures so uh we've also covered in uh, my video lectures why stem disciplines are important uh, for society at large and why addressing gender and diversity issues are important and relevant in education pedagogy and communication so how we teach these four stem disciplines what we teach how we learn these make a difference to how different kinds of people men women people from different ethnic cultural socio economic backgrounds they take up careers in stem so there is an immense amount of research around the world which shows that the more diversity we have of people working in stem areas the more creative and innovative is the output and therefore the greater the benefit for society so bringing gender and diversity issues into stem communication is important because we want to go beyond western male middle or upper class scholars and enable everybody in society to learn these disciplines and benefit from them we want to open it up to other groups who are underrepresented in science technology engineering and mathematics also one of the issues which is currently uh, debated in a big way around the world but especially in the united states Uh, their president barack obama have, for example has talked about how um, the number of students getting into science technology engineering and mathematics is coming down and uh, they are actually scared that asians people of asian latin american origin are tending to dominate stem education in the us and people uh, who are of european origin or anglo saxon origin in the in the united states they are moving to other areas which are more lucrative financially like law and finance and so on but less in stem so this is seen as a crisis in india of course this crisis is of a different kind because in india as an emerging economy as a developing country we know the importance of science technology engineering and mathematics for 
issues of development for technological development and so on. But we do know that because of past historical practices of discrimination, inequality and so on, the majority of people from the majority of communities are underrepresented in teaching and research with reference to these disciplines. In the IITs particularly we are very conscious that the number of women students who come to study engineering are very small only about 10 percent whereas uh, if you were if they, if they should be represented according to their proportion in the population they should be between 45 and 50 percent. So here communication matters because the language we use, the words we use, the terms we use, the concepts we use when we teach science, technology, engineering and mathematics, the overall communication strategies we adopt, these have an impact either on reducing the inequalities and prejudices of society or on enhancing these. So while society may have certain limitations because of which the inequalities in society carry forward into our education whereby we find that the number of women for example in higher education is very low, the number of women as scientists is very low, number of women as mathematicians is very low and so on. So we do not want the existing inequalities to carry forward into our own education and research systems. So we want to use our communication strategies to avoid bringing the existing prejudices into our systems. Just to give you a couple of examples which I have covered in more detail in the video lectures, how do we cover different topics or themes. So one of the things that I talked about there is that there are certain non-stereotypical areas which are conventionally not covered when we talk about science and engineering. So in chemistry for example, how many of us uh, talk about what happens within the kitchen as chemistry? In Hindi for example, those of you who, who know Hindi will know that there is a common root for the kitchen and for chemistry. So in chemistry is Rasayan Shastra and kitchen is Rasoi. So there is what happens in the kitchen is actually chemistry, but somehow we think that that is not science and therefore the various issues related to chemical processes, uh, issues related to sanitation, hygiene, food, nutrition, medicine, health, all of these are very integrally related to what we do in the kitchen. So we do not, but we do not cover that when we talk about chemistry. So what we are saying is topics and themes have to be covered in a non-stereotypical way so that everybody is encouraged to think of science, technology and engineering. Similarly with housing as well. So I had a student for example a couple of years ago in an environmental studies course which I was teaching who was from an underprivileged rural background and he was doing civil engineering here. So one of the things he was interested in because of his own background was low cost in housing but most of the faculty members were simply not interested in that. So he came and asked me you know why is it that I am interested in this, this is very important as a development issue for the country but nobody wants is interested in guiding me on this particular topic. So what the what is happening in these examples is that the inequalities in society are coming into how we do research, how we think of research, how we think of scientific topics. That is what we want to avoid through our communication strategies in the classroom and through uh, in our research uh, areas. Now I also spent a little bit of time in my video lectures talking about what is unique and different about the STEM approach. The STEM approach is not simply about thinking of science, technology, engineering, mathematics in discrete ways that is as in separate silos as Professor Fata keeps uh, talking about quite often, he is very critical of that silo kind of approach. So the STEM approach tries to integrate all these different disciplines and teach them in an integrated way. We also learned about how we can cross disciplines that is when we as for example as a mathematician if I am looking at engineering, I do not simply bring my mathematics to an understanding of engineering. I modify my own understanding of mathematics because of the need to apply mathematics in the engineering context similarly with all other disciplines. So we want to make sense of the world in a holistic manner because of which communication needs to understand the social context of all these disciplines. Why are we doing this research? Why are we teaching this? Why are we developing engineers and technologists? So bringing in a social consciousness naturally means both understanding the inequalities in society and avoiding the consequ consequences of that for our own communication. So just to uh, you know contextualize 
the issues related to gender and diversity and STEM communication to India, I want to bring in something here which I did not uh, talk about in my video lectures, but which has recently been in the newspapers. Uh, so, uh, and, but this is something that has been discussed quite often in the past also in India and other countries. This is with reference to trying to understand why there are so few women in management, why there are so few women in engineering, why so few women get admission into IITs or IIMs. So, some people have tried to argue that this is because of an excessive focus on quantitative skills as an important requirement to both get admission into these institutions and to take up these career options. But then a lot of research in India and in other countries have shown that the educational aspirations and achievements are not simply about skills. So, a lot of research in India itself has shown that up to high school, girl students tend to perform better than boys almost everywhere in India in science and mathematics, but yet they almost completely disappear when it comes to higher education, where do they go? Is it because of lack of skill or is it because of social issues? So, here I do not want to get into a sociological uh, discussion, instead I want to talk about how communication can be a very important aspect of understanding this problem and addressing this problem. So, here it is said that both in school and college as well as at home, there is there are certain stereotypes that men or boys are better at understanding cops concepts and understanding while women are better at mugging up or rote learning. Now, this is a completely unscientific thing, there is no study which shows this, but because this stereotype is there, we sort of discourage women from taking up certain career options or expressing their interest in certain kinds of dis, uh, disciplines and that is the communication issue that we should address while talking to both boys and girls in our own education systems. Likewise, in terms of posing problems which are equally challenging. So, sometimes teachers are guilty of saying of giving simpler problems to women because we think they cannot do certain kinds of problems. Okay. So, in the recent discussions about this in India for example, show that almost every major and public sector bank in India is headed by a woman, which completely you know demystifies these kinds of myths. Most of the public sector oil companies in India are headed by women, okay. most of the huge FMCG companies Pepsi and so on are headed by women, okay. Yahoo is headed by women. So, these are all stereotypes which if we overcome we can enable more women to come into these kind of spheres or the kind of teaching we do with reference to scientific work. Everybody knows of Albert Einstein, but very few people know that Albert Einstein built his extremely important insights on the basis of his colleague Amy Neuter who was a woman. Similarly, women's contribution in the discovery of the DNA for example, structure of the DNA are rarely talked about. So, understanding these broader histories of science is very important for us to offer role models for women, women and men equally. Therefore, the last video mo module that I had offered was about how we should modify our teaching, how we should modify communication in the classroom to address these kinds of prejudices uh, and to avoid these kinds of prejudices. So, uh, having given that overview of the context and background for including this module in this course on uh, technical communication, I would like to get into a bit of discussion with you now. So, in the in my modules, I had given you one assignment and I hope uh, most if not all of you uh, actually did this assignment. So, here we had asked you that from your own experience as teachers or in terms of talking to other teachers and students, we wanted you to write a brief statement about the kind of difficulties that student face in learning any of the STEM subjects, any of the science, technology, engineering, mathematics subjects. And then I told you to relate those difficulties of teaching and learning to the students gender, maybe language proficiency, they may be excellent students in mathematics or engineering, but they have a language difficulty or because they come from a rural background or because they have not been good schools before they came to your college and so on. So, I want you 
we have wanted you to write a statement on how what you as teachers did to overcome those difficulties. Okay? So, uh, I would like to uh, now go to some of you and uh, who would have done these assignments and I would want you to share what kind of difficulties you have faced and how you try to address these difficulties in terms of the topics that we covered in this course. Okay? So, those who are ready play, may please raise their hands. Good afternoon. It is a common observation that in engineering institutes even today the category of women is quite less admitted students I mean. Mm -hmm. Yes, go on. There is somewhere at the background that how the students will uh, do in future when it relates to engineering. Mm -hmm. Specifically fields like mechanical and civil engineering. Okay. Yeah. So, you know these are the kind of uh, issues that we need to address in the classroom because it was felt that you know there are certain disciplines which are hard for men uh, for women and not so for women and men and so on. So, as, as of now for example, if you come to IIT civil engineering department hardly anyone does any hard work. Okay? Nobody does physically hard work I mean, okay? mentally hard work of course. So, most, most of the work in all departments is done in the computers, in the laboratories. One of the common complaints against our civil engineering department is that nobody goes out into the field, nobody actually looks as seen as real construction. Okay? So, a lot of work can be done in labs, a lot of different kinds of work can be done in civil and mechanical engineering and of course, women are equally capable of going out into the field to do different kinds of work. You know the Amartya Sen, our Nobel Prize winning economist once made this statement that we call women as weaker section, but women actually do a lot of physically hard labor. Okay? So, in what sense are they weak? So, it is possible that there are certain tasks that men and women could not do in the past, but that is no longer true. Technology has developed so much and there are so many technological options that men and women can equally do different kinds of work in these different subjects. So, we what we should do is to try and help them to do that work better. If there are obstacles, one obstacle that we see is that uh, an issue of safety or security for women in carrying out certain kinds of work because not safety from machines but safety from other human beings okay, which are more dangerous now. So, how can we ensure safety and security in different ways? How can we enable a better learning environment? So, how can we modify our laboratories, our coursework, our subjects so that what is of interest to women they can take up. If we can do that then I think these kind of limitations which we used to observe earlier of women not being able to do some things they can be overcome. For example, we have a department of earth sciences in IIT Bombay where historically very few women to, uh, would go because it was felt that women could not go into the field. Of course, there are more women working in the field in agriculture than men probably. You know, lots of millions of women are working in agriculture. So, that again was a myth that women cannot go into the field. So, understanding these kinds of myths and trying to overcome is what we have to do in our communication. Uh, sir, that is true when we come to the learning environment and creating facilities at the institute. But since you touched upon the point of the safety and security of yes. the woman, yeah. later on going to the professional or making a career, mm. still today is a question mark for me as a yeah. parent or people like me who are parent for sending yeah. uh, women to such an education. Yeah. It's finally a question mark and that is yeah. one of the reason I feel wherein mm. uh, women may lack in such yes. education hence further. Yeah. So, it's so, a point of concern. Yes, yes. So, you know that's what I'm uh, been trying to say that there is a problem in society. Okay? There is a problem with parents, there is a problem with uh, communities, cities, transportation all of those kind of things. But as educators, how do we make sure that we can provide the best of facilities in an equal way to everybody? What happens in society is not something that we can take care of immediately that depends on the government and a lot of other agencies. So, as educators at least can we create a level playing field? And then that may in the long term change how other people also address these problems. For example, I was talking to the HR manager of Aditya Birla group. So, they were talking about how they would like more women to work in their factories and they were concerned that parents were not allowing these women to work. So, they were also creating better facilities for women, more security, more safety, better transport so that women can come to work. And that HR manager had got this idea about equality somewhere where he himself had studied. 
So we are trying to make a larger difference in the longer term. Okay. So thank you very much. Since we want to give a chance to a few institutions, unfortunately we cannot engage in this discussion more. But thank you very much for that question. Ha, yes, sir. Uh, as you showed the slide previously, I would like to comment on uh, what I experienced from uh, uh, students who I have seen from rural and urban uh, areas. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my student uh, who came from rural area, he was very harsh in understanding English. Mm -hmm. uh, I, con I con uh, conducted practicals of basic civil engineering. Okay. I found that uh, the students were very well in understanding uh, what I told them physically on the instrument. But what I speak them in English, so they were very difficult to find out the yes. communication gap or communica yeah. understanding what I am going to communicate to them. Yes. But when I found that when I do it practically in front of them, mm -hmm. they could repeat it, they could take the reading very well. Yes. Yeah. So that was what I experienced. So oh. what I feel personally that uh, mm -hmm. they are capable. Yes. But yes. the gap only between the understanding is English language. Yes. Yes. And what they are, what they don't learn in their yeah. uh, schooling. Yes, yes. Yeah, thanks. That's a very interesting observation because we know that uh, English is a problem for all of us, not only for students. It's not the mother tongue. It's not our mother tongue. So we all have struggled to learn English and therefore uh, students may have uh, very good abilities and skills in different subjects, but uh, due to lack of uh, language abilities, sometimes they lose out. So we should uh, ensure that they are, their learning is not affected because of language abilities and what you are doing I think is an excellent uh, example because uh, usually uh, if students do not understand at higher education we expect that students also acquire conceptual and theoretical learning that is when they can apply that is very important. So if they cannot understand it explaining things through practice through experiments or uh, in other subjects through examples and illustrations. That is very important uh, for students to learn and we see that in fact their own self confidence increases if we use these other methods to make them understand and eventually uh, their abilities including language abilities also improve. So thanks for sharing this with us and I am glad to know that uh, you are actually conscious of these limitations and you are trying to overcome them. In my experience of teaching when compared to boys girls perform well, okay. regarding mathematical problems and derivative parts, regarding boys, they can they can perform well in the that is practical, practically related things. They can they can get output very easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can give equal importance to both boys and girls. In Tamil Nadu, girls are very brave to face any problem, and they can even stay inside the college up to 9 o'clock, night 9 o'clock or 10, 10 o'clock, yes, they yes. can work hard okay. to come out as like boys. Okay, yeah, it's not that just that girls are brave, also that there is an atmosphere where I think you people must have created where they can stay till 9 o'clock and study. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. In corporates. But yes. in only in the manufacturing sector, still that equality is expected. There is a problem in uh, safety regard regarding problem happens in manufacturing sector. But corporates uh, in, in our state used to send girls for working even during the night time. Yes, yes. There is no problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yes, th that's one of the issues also about diversity that uh, all parts of India are not the same. And we know that uh, Tamil Nadu is one of the more industrialized states in India. And we do have a lot of women working in industries and factories. So, yeah, thanks and uh, thanks for the inspiration to both of you. And I'm glad to see uh, that uh, there are women uh, faculty members who are addressing these issues of equity between men and women. And especially for the question on mathematics, I think you specifically mentioned derivatives. So that's something on which actually uh, in the United States a lot of research is being done. But now they've started in India as well that there are different kinds of subjects and different concepts and not everyone, it is not just men and women, but there are different kinds of abilities related to how you can uh, understand, comprehend and apply these different uh, approaches and methods. So understanding that different people may have different abilities and then adjusting for them in your teaching, that is very important because there may be one student who does not understand derivatives but who may be very good in something else. 
So, uh, trying to understand the capabilities of each student, encouraging them in that and then gradually making sure they at least learn the basics of every topic, now, that is what we as teachers are supposed to do to address the gaps in quality of teaching. So, thanks uh, for sharing this. In case uh, any of you have uh, done these write ups and you would like to share them with us, you can actually email them to us also using the system. Okay? We will be very happy to uh, read uh, your uh, statements on this and we will be very happy to use them in our own teaching also. Okay. So, um, we will do a few exercises and before that, uh, since we covered different issues diversity and equity, that is we covered gender issues, age, disability and uh, age, uh, let us go through them one by one very briefly. So, we looked at uh, the issue of gender and one of the things we covered was the difference between gender sensitivity, gender awareness and gender neutrality. So, uh, I explained to you in my video lecture, what is the difference between gender aware and gender neutral and in what contexts do we use language which is gender aware as opposed to language which is gender neutral. And uh, uh, um, especially in uh, our own context where technology and development are very important or currently as we are seeing disasters uh, are affecting us in a major way, uh, paying attention to gender issues is important not only in terms of communication, but how that communication translates into actual interventions, actual policies, uh, how our knowledge is useful for society at large. So, I hope uh, you did some of those exercises that we had prescribed to you. I hope you also looked through the material that we had given to you on these topics. So, based on that, we can uh, do a few exercises now, so that we understand these differences better. So, we will do a few uh, tutorial exercises now about how the diversity and sensitivity issues that we covered in our lectures and the need to avoid biases and prejudices, how this can be uh, incorporated into our technical communication. So, let me uh, take up these, uh, let me give you a few questions and uh, you can uh, write down answers to this and then I will come to uh, some of your colleges uh, virtually of course and uh, take some answers. So, the first question is as follows. So, I am giving a statement there. The first statement is anyone disagreeing with this statement should give his reasons. Now, suppose I ask you to change this sentence and rewrite it in plural to substitute the pronoun his because if we are to be gender sensitive, we have to avoid using language which uh, where a male or masculine noun or pronoun is used as a generic term to refer to all human beings. So, the problem with this sentence is that it is using the masculine pronoun his to refer to all human beings, men, women, third gender and so on. So, suppose I ask you to rewrite this sentence where you drop the pronoun his and instead rewrite in plural. So, I have given you four options. Anyone disagreeing with this statement should give their reasons. All those disagreeing with this statement should give their reasons. Anyone disagreeing with this statement should give his or her reasons. So, which one is correct? A, B, C or D? Uh, four options you are saying, option number third seems to be the most correct. Okay, so, what I have told you is to use plural. So, you are still sure option number C is the correct answer? First is, my friend is saying first is the best. First is the best. Okay, what is the consensus in your college? What does the majority say? A, B, C or D? Okay. What? Okay. Consensus is on second, sir. Consensus is on second. Okay. So, the consensus actually is the right answer grammatically as well as in terms of gender sensitive because the third option uses what is called as a pronoun pair, not a plural pronoun. Okay. Thanks. The second question, again there is a statement there. Man's search for knowledge has led him to improve scientific methodology. So, here we are using the word man which is a noun and the pronoun him. Both of them are masculine nouns and pronouns which we are using in a generic sense to refer to all human beings. So, if we have to rephrase that sentence to make it gender fair using first person. So, I am going to go into, into a bit of grammar here using first person I, me, us and so on. So, which of the following is the most appropriate way of rephrasing this sentence? Option 1 
The search for knowledge has led us to improve scientific methodology. The search for knowledge has led me to improve scientific methodology. Our search for knowledge has led to improvement of scientific methodology. So, which one um, is the correct option? The answers can can be one or three. Okay. That is what does what do the other people in your room have to say? They agree with you? We discussed and so we decided to one or three. One or three. Okay, let us go back to the answer. The search for knowledge has led us to improve scientific methodology. Three is our search for knowledge has led to improvement of scientific methodology. So you are absolutely correct. Both one and three are correct. Okay. So now you go to the next round. Okay. In the next slide, we are saying this is the sentence. Anyone facing problems at the workplace should give his complaint in writing. So, this is about workplace communication, but uh, you know it applies to the technical communication matter as well. So, we may give this kind of an instruction that people who are facing different kinds of problems should give a complaint. So, again you can see this sentence is formulated in such a way that this is not uh, gender sensitive. So, when we change this sentence using what are called as pronoun pairs. So, I have discussed these pronoun pairs in my lectures, I have also given you material about pronoun pairs. So, which of the following options is correct? Is it option 4, both A and C, option 3, all those facing problems at the workplace should give their complaints, option B, anyone facing problems should give his or her complaint or option A, option 1, anyone facing problems at the workplace should give their complaints. So, which is the correct answer? Answer 2 is the the correct answer, uh -huh. second option. Okay, why is it the correct answer? Because pair goes with he, his and her, both together. Okay, so we are using a pronoun pair. Okay, thanks, you are right. Okay, so we go to question number 4. Uh, the aged bureaucrat was arrested on corruption charges. So, this is the sentence that is given to us. So, we say that in this sentence, the term aged bureaucrat is considered to be inappropriate because the reference to um, okay because of the four options I think there is a mistake here the last part of the sentence should be removed that is actually option A. So, there are four options given here the reference to age is not relevant the term does not convey a proper idea about the age of the person older bureaucrats are not corrupt none of the above. So, which option is correct here? from the perspective of giving respect to people and from the perspective of being sensitive to issues of age, diversity and so on. So, who has raised their hand? This is Pillai Institute in Navi, Mumbai, in Panvel. Okay. Sir, answer is A. A, A sir, age is not relevant in this case okay. while reporting that the bureaucrat, corrupt, bureaucrat is corrupt, whether it is age age or not age okay. does not make difference sir. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, it doesn't. Young people also can be corrupt, no? Uh, sir, I would like to make one more point. Yeah. Uh, whether this answer is correct, sir? So, option A is correct, not D, because here for us the age is not relevant. We are talking about the aspect of corruption and who is corrupt. The age is something that is not relevant. So, I think uh, uh, when I was covering the different topics in my modules, one of the things that I was saying across different kinds of uh, diversity is that as academics, as people who are researchers and scholars, we have to be extremely careful not only to be sensitive, but also to be to only to be very precise. So, we can only use those terms for which we have a basis. So, here age is not relevant. If age happens to be relevant, if age is something that you are researching about with reference to corruption, you can bring it. Otherwise, what is not relevant it should not be brought in. So, precision and clarity is very important in technical communication, but thank you for your answers. The correct answer is option A. Now, let me come back to this quiz that we are doing. So, this is a fifth question. For this, I would like to do it in a different way. Let us, we are going to use A view to uh, take your answers. So, the revamped poverty reduction program is likely to benefit 50 million people. Second statement is revamped poverty reduction program is likely to benefit 50 million men and women. So, I am saying that statement B is preferred to statement A because 
So, is it because it is gender neutral that is statement B, is it because it is both gender neutral and gender aware or number 3 it is gender aware or none of the above. So, the we have so far received how many answers 64. So, out of 98 roughly half has given C as the answer that it is gender aware and that in fact is the correct answer as well because it uses the it refers to both men and women it is aware that these benefits can be different for men and women. So, but the rest of you do not have to get disappointed you will also get correct answers. Question 6 uh, we will also create an A view poll for this this is about with reference to people with disability. So, we are going to give you four titles of um, articles from journals from science and engineering journals as well as uh, public policy journals. So, the names of the titles of these four articles are there you have to tell us which one is uh, correct in referring to people with disability which means the others are incorrect or wrong. A is the title of the article is EMG based high level human robo interaction system for people with disability. Robotics the second one is robotics and its role in helping disabled people. The third is towards the characterization of building occupancies for fire safety engineers, prevalence type and mobility of disabled people and the fourth one is a policy article closer to home a critique of British government policy towards accommodating learning disabled people. So, which one is correct in terms of the currently acceptable appropriate ways of referring to people with disability. Can I just uh, uh, go to some of you and uh, ask you the correct answer. Sir. So, the first option I think is correct. Okay. So, because in that case the disability is uh, my tone. The, the other sentences they are very prominent about uh, what kind of disability, mm -hmm. but in the first one the pinch is a milder one. I mean they do not mention as to, uh, the disabled people, uh -huh. but people who have disability. Oh, the rest of you do you agree with her about uh, A being the correct answer ok. Is there somebody who says she is wrong ok nobody ok. I will just uh, tell you in a minute whether you are right or wrong. Can we take up another college? Sir, uh, you are saying that instead of using his or her, we can use plurals like they. Correct. Why don't we use once? Once. Once attitude like this, his yes, attitude sir. or her attitude. Mm -hmm. Why don't we use once attitude? Yes, we can. We can do that also. So there are uh, many different ways in which one could uh, avoid gender biased language. So one could use plural pairs. One could use pronoun pairs. Uh, one could use plural uh, nouns. Of uh, plural forms of nouns, one could use pronoun pairs, one could also uh, use these kinds of terms to refer to oneself uh, as once and so on. So, that is uh, uh, why you know it is so mysterious why people continue to use gender insensitive language when there are so many different options. Okay. So, uh, you have given us one extra option. So, thank you for that. We can do that as well. So, I was just giving you an example of a plural uh, way of doing it, pronoun pair, but this can also be done. Okay. Let me get back to my question. So, the correct answer is A, Bhubaneswar College answer was correct, but the reason was wrong. Okay. The reason why it is correct is that if you remember what I mentioned to you, a person is not a condition. So, disability is a condition, but uh, there was an advertisement I saw uh, in the newspaper yesterday. Yesterday was if you remember if you know the international day for persons with disability. Did you know that? It was there was a lot of advertisements in newspapers yesterday or day before international day. So, one of the advertisements said disability is only a piece of the person, this only disability is only one part of who you are as human beings. Okay. Therefore, we should not reduce an entire human being to a disability. So, if we say disabled person the disability is coming first and person is coming later. Since a disability is a condition, a person is not a condition, we always say person with a disability, people with a disability, child with autism, you know, a person with a handicap and so on. Handicap or disability should come later, the person should come first. That is the reason why option A is the correct answer. Okay? So, thank you for your responses. 
let us go back to the slide, which of which one of the following does not follow an appropriate way of referring to older people. So, in the earlier examples, we looked at age, we looked at disability and we looked at uh, gender. Let us take up one more example of people who are older. So, the question is, so I am giving you again four titles of articles from journals. So, remember I am asking you not which is the correct way, but which one of the following does not follow an appropriate way of referring to older people, which is not appropriate. Okay, I am not asking you the correct answer, I am talking asking you which is not appropriate and then you can explain to me why it is not appropriate. So, the first option is a multifactorial intervention to reduce the risk of falling among elderly people. Second one is hip fractures in the elderly. The third one atrial fibrillation a major contributor to stroke in the elderly and the fourth one is observations on the brains of demented old people. So, all four are from medical journals. Uh, so, the answer is from our side is fourth because we are in a sense we are uh, addressing the people uh, like the word with demented. So, I guess we are abusing like uh, the older elder, elderly people by saying them demented. Okay. So, from our side the consensus is goes for a fourth option. Okay. So, hip fractures in the elderly, the elderly, demented old people among elderly people. Yeah. So, uh, can I take one more uh, uh, answer from another college? Sir, according to us, the answer is number D mm -hmm. because we cannot uh, call the elderly people as the relented one. Okay. Okay. All of you agree um, on that. Because we are not, we, they are elder than us, so we mm -hmm. cannot. Okay. Uh, give them such, um, we have to give them some respect, we cannot call them okay. relented. Okay. So, let us just look at the options again. So, you see the first one refers to elderly people, second one refers to the elderly, third one refers to the elderly and the fourth one is demented. So, uh, the answer to this is a bit complicated because my purpose is not just to get an answer, but also to explain certain things. So, you see in option A, what we have done is to add the word people. So, I mentioned to you in my lecture that adding the word people that is giving it as a suffix when you refer to the elderly denotes respect. Likewise, prefixing any reference to the elderly with the definite article the 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 that also denotes respect. So, from that point of view A, B and C are appropriate. Now, one could argue that D is the inappropriate one because we are referring to them as demented old people and this is partly correct your answer is partly correct partly wrong because dementia is also a medical condition among the elderly. So, the way in which it is used here is the problem. So, demented is used in a pejorative way demented is used in a negative sense to refer to people who are older. So, saying demented old people is inappropriate. The correct way would be old people with dementia. So, the article actually is referring to the medical illness referred to as dementia, but because they refer to they use the word demented which is used popularly also in a negative way. Therefore, it is inappropriate. The correct way would have been to put the people first and the medical condition dementia later. Okay, so, both of you have got the answer correct. Congratulations. Now, we are coming to the end of this particular uh, uh, session. So, I would like to uh, get some general responses from all of you uh, both to my video lectures and to the exercises that we just did. So, about issues of diversity and equity and how to bring in greater sensitivity into our communication, technical communication. Uh, I would like to know three things. What did you learn from this particular module? Why do you think this is important? And after learning these things, whether there has been any change in your own communication? So, I would like responses from all of you and I am going to note them down here. So, our objective here is not, this is not a course like, uh, you know, a regular college where students need to pass an exam. So, we are trying to make a change here that is the whole point of this course that we need to 
modify, we need to become better at how we communicate. So from this particular module, what is it that you have learned and why do you think uh, the changes in communication that we are suggesting in this particular module are important and whether any change has actually taken place and if so in what way. So we have gone to SIS College Nerul uh, who wants to speak up. So the session uh, was definitely um, an eye opener and uh, we learnt a lot. Uh, first thing we learnt was various issues related to STEM, what is STEM exactly mm -hmm. and STEM and its application not just in technology and engineering studies but in our day to day lives as well that is getting out of the stereotype. Okay. And uh, that was uh, one very good issue and of course the general bias that we come across, we all face, uh, not we but our students do come to mm. us, various issues related to gender bias. So how that can be resolved, again, uh, that information uh, mm -hmm. is uh, okay. this session. Uh, so my uh, colleague would like to ask a question uh, regarding the gender bias. Okay. No, sir. Yes. I have one question regarding transgender. Okay. Nowadays, yeah. transgender, we are including this as a, yes. a third option even in filling yes. uh, forms, yes. Yes. admission forms or anywhere else. Yeah. So, uh, you talked about pronoun pair, yeah. his or her. Yes, correct. Now, there we need to introduce one more option yes. if we yes. are you nowadays, yes. which we are giving as third yes. option. Yeah. So, do we need to have some grammatic changes in our grammar yeah. or something like that? Yeah. How will you address this issue? Yes, yes. So this is an important question that I am also being asked these days. So it took us many years and decades to make the language gender sensitive between men and women. But of course, we are also talking about third gender, transgender and so on. And uh, we are also using words like other gender. So as the reason I did not cover them is that as yet. Uh, we do not have uh, accepted norms where we can modify language used to refer to other gender. We do have, we are modifying the forms nowadays, you know, very many forms that we have in schools, colleges, government forms and so on. Uh, they are used including an option for uh, a gender other than male and female. But uh, in terms of uh, grammatical changes that we require to refer to these other genders, still uh, uh, many scholars are discussing and debating about what is the best way without uh, uh, modifying the meaning of a sentence and without making the sentence more confusing, without losing clarity. Okay? So in that way, uh, slowly we are trying to develop uh, uh, protocols or uh, strategies wherein we can refer to these other genders also. But, uh, I have not covered it so far because there is no consensus on this. So the only advice I would give is uh, without losing clarity, if you can find out ways in which you can also include references to other gender, please do that. It is also very important to do that. Okay? So thank you for that question. Uh, your session is very nice and uh, I must thank you for bringing this uh, topic into the field of technical communication. Some language ex foreign experts who write books on business communication, they bring in general issue as well as uh, the culture in communication, uh, culture as well as uh, legal aspects in communication. I think this is a very important task to be uh, dealt with, though we have not covered it in the syllabus. Hmm. We teach a, a course on technical communication here okay, for our BTEC okay, students okay, okay. and we, I will spend some time uh, in teaching this also. Okay. Another top, another thing I want to uh, add here is, you referred uh, the his or her as a, a pronoun pair. Yes. This is also called, the western language experts call it, uh, this is a new name I am learning, uh, pronoun pair is very good sir. The western language experts call it a uh, uh, bulky pronoun. Okay. And they, they say it must be avoided. Yes. Uh, by using a plural sir. Yes. That is very yes. good. Sir. Yes. That is yes. uh, another option they are giving. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, the, the, you are the. Thank you for this uh, input. It's referred to as a bulky pronoun. Yes, not um, all of us are aware of this. So I thought it was it'd be easy to use the word pronoun pair. So, but uh, it's uh, in fact 
many things which we thought of as grammatically correct, those things are changing now. So, you know, because the, the bulky pronouns that you mentioned, uh, they, uh, these kind of terms we were taught in our own childhood to avoid earlier because they made the language a bit more heavy, it made them complicated and so on. But in the interest of gender sensitivity, nowadays we say that these kinds of usages are acceptable. In fact, uh, in, we were all taught in school that we should avoid passive voice and use more of active voice. But uh, I have not, I do not have enough time to give that example here. But if you look at uh, some of the material on gender sensitive language, including the UNESCO book that I recommended to you, uh, which I have, we have uploaded, I think, for you, there also they say that in the interest of gender sensitivity, you can actually use passive voice also. So that helps you to circumvent this problem of referring to a particular gender. Okay. So th thanks for that input. Yes, it is from Krishna Ravi. Very happy in uh, 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 your session is very useful for us. Our participants feel very, very useful. Uh, before that, uh, before your session, uh, we were not having that much of importance for gender sensitization. Mm -hmm. So we learned many things about uh, how to refer he, she, especially how mm -hmm. not to discriminate between he and she. Mm -hmm. So these things are very useful for us. We feel very uh, what's called interesting and also um, a much uh, importance for that uh, particular gender okay. issues. Okay. So can you, can any of you, uh, are any of you willing to share with us in what way your communication has changed after uh, uh, going through these modules on uh, uh, sensitivity, equity, diversity and so on? Thank you, sir. Actually, uh, after attending this uh, program, actually, uh, the technical communication, especially this uh, title which is covered by you related to this uh, gender uh, and diversity in uh, science, technology, engineering and uh, mathematics, uh, it would help us, uh, help our faculty members to be very clear in certain aspect of uh, this uh, technical communication. Mm -hmm. Definitely, it will uh, help them in future for uh, communicating with uh, the peers okay. and then uh, to the world especially. And then uh, not only uh, to this particular topic, the topics which, uh, which have been covered uh, for the past uh, four days or so will uh, really help us to improve our uh, this technical communication. Mm. Uh, in case of uh, writing uh, that papers, uh, abstract writing and the other papers. Okay. okay. And then uh, for the researchers for doing research mm. will uh, definitely help mm. us. And then uh, another co question is there. My doubt is, uh, is there uh, any specific uh, place which you can tell us where uh, you still find this uh, gender and uh, diversity, which mm -hmm. is uh, a problem arises? Problem. Problem, of course, exists everywhere. With uh, your own experience, can you uh, uh, give us an example, sir? Ah, see, so I, I think examples can be given by everyone sitting in your room. So what I'm saying is, it is because uh, these problems exist that we are talking of the need to uh, modify our communication strategies. So. The important change that is occurring in all our societies is that where earlier the people who were part of science, technology, engineering, research, teaching and so on, they came from a very few selected communities. Now as society is democratizing, we have both men and women and we have more people from different groups, different backgrounds coming into all kinds of professions. So that means that the diversity the population working in any particular organization is increasing. Therefore, the need to address uh, gender and, and diversity concerns is more. So, it is possible that in some, some places, some institutions, the inequalities, discriminations are less, in some it is more, it depends, it depends on the culture and so on. So, the problem actually exists almost everywhere, both consciously and unconsciously. But uh, as far as the 
uh, I'm not sure if you're asking whether uh, in some places it is more, in some places it is less. So we clearly see that where people are more aware of the need to address these inequality issues, their communication strategies are different. So in, in our own institution, for example, um, me and a colleague of mine about 15 years ago organized this workshop on gender sensitive communication. And since then we see there has been a huge difference in how people use language in a context where both women work. Also, we have teachers forms which they so that change some time to come. Okay, so basically our idea is to make that change happen and naturally we see that when they change their communication, when you see different kinds of forms where both men and women are given importance and so on, then people's own consciousness also increases. Okay? So, so thanks for that question and uh, also for uh, uh, you know thanking uh, also for uh, telling us that you found all the modules very useful and you also mentioned that these are useful as a researcher. I think that is very important that we want to highlight and it is something that Professor Fatak uh, mentioned uh, very early in the, in the, in the introductory session and he's been, this is something he has been stressing because it is not simply about you being able to communicate better. We want that all of you in your respective colleges also become good researchers. In fact, another faculty member who inaugurated this workshop earlier, Professor Kanan Maudgalia, that is one of the common themes he talking about, he keeps talking about in IIT all the time, that the quality of research in colleges also has to be substantial. Okay? So part of the, uh, the, the factors which uh, made us choose particular topics in this communi technical communication course is to enable you to become communicators with reference to publications. So we want you to become better researchers and to produce better, better research output also and I am very glad that you brought up this issue. Thanks for that. And we will continue this discussion after 5 minutes. Okay? So see you in 5 minutes.